Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you all. Welcome to worship. I have a couple of announcements, but the first and most important is to let you know that today, uh, in addition to being a day of celebrations, that this is the day that the Lord has made, it is also a day where uh, people are coming to uh, communion for the first time. And so uh, we celebrated First Communion with Caitlin and with Abby at 9 o'clock, and today uh, in this service, uh, Sophie will join us at the table. We give thanks to God for her and for what God is doing in her life, and we rejoice uh, as we come to the table with her. So uh, great, great joy today uh, to celebrate that with her. Uh, a couple things I want to draw your attention to before we get into our time of worship together. Um, I want to let you know that the angel tree uh, is still up. There are still some angel ornaments on it. Uh, those uh, gifts need to be back next Sunday. And you're going to bring them back uh, unwrapped, and then we'll let the parents um, be a part of the process and part of wrapping. We we'll deliver them with wrapping paper uh, so that they know what their children are getting for Christmas. Um, but if you are able to take one of those uh, angel ornaments and to uh, go shopping and be one of Jesus elves this season, uh, your generosity is a great blessing and is a gift to uh, the families in need. So that's there. Also uh, on that entryway table, you will see two new sign-up sheets. One of them uh, has, um, we're looking for readers for uh, December 31st, which is New Year's Eve and a Sunday. So we will be here at nine o'clock and 11 o'clock and uh, looking for some extra readers for those services. So if you can help, uh, please sign up. Uh, if um, I had someone this morning say, Hey, do you think you can pick me a reading without uh, lots of names I don't know how to pronounce? So if you have a special request, let me know, and I'll try to accommodate it. Uh, also, you'll see in the, on the entryway table a, a sign-up sheet for this Thursday's Service of Remembrance. So this uh, Thursday night at 7 o'clock, we'll gather here for a service that is uh, quiet and a place of peace and prayer, uh, for those who are weary, those who are struggling, those who are grieving this time of year. Um, in particular, uh, part of that service, we will lift up and, and uh, hang an angel ornament uh, for those who have died. And so if you are planning to come, if you have someone in your family you would like to be remembered as a part of that service, please make sure we get those names. And you can do that either on that sign-up sheet or by emailing or calling the office. And so uh, those things. Okay, and those are all of the announcements I wanted to draw your attention to. I'm going to ask uh, our youngest children of God to join me, like, right there <laughs> for a children's message. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Whoa, that just a water. Listen, nope, nope, he's perfect. So when you do that, when you touch this water, what you do is draw a cross on your head with it, so like that, and you can remember how much Jesus loves you. That's what it's there for. Okay, so here's a question for you. We have been lighting a candle every week, so we lit this one the first week, then that one, and today we're going to light that one. Is there something different about that one? What's different? Because it's red. Yeah, it's a different color, right? It's a whole different color. Do you see that color anywhere else in this church? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing that color. I'm wearing the pink. And so why do we have pink? As Why is this Sunday different? Do you know? Yeah, it's getting really close to Christmas. Yeah. And so God breaks into our, day, our journey to Christmas. And we get this Sunday, the pink is a Sunday of joy. Do you know what that word means? What's joy? Yeah, we, we wear a different color for it. What does the word joy mean? Yeah, you know. Happiness. Yep. Somebody this morning said, uh, if you think about Buddy the Elf, that he was all about joy. That it is a, a, a feeling that bubbles up. What do we have to be joyful about? What do we know, what do we know is coming in the church that we have to be joyful about? 
Oh, I hate when that you think you know, and then it just mm, comes right out of your head. What do you guys know? What's coming? Christmas. What happens on Christmas in the church? Don't. Don't. Whoa. Okay. Okay. No touching. How about you sit right there? That's good. Okay. Yes. What's coming? Christmas. And on Christmas, what happens? Yes, presents. Presents, yeah. The in, the in the church, what happens? Yeah. What do we celebrate? No. Yes, is somebody Jesus. special born? Yeah. Yes, it's Jesus' yeah. birthday. Yeah. We celebrate that yeah. Jesus was born. And that oh, gives us birthday? that kind of yeah. joy yeah. that bubbles oh, up. Stop. And today we get to celebrate that a little bit early. And so let's say a prayer together and give thanks to God for the joy that comes well, and that we're so celebrating good. today. Will you bow your heads with me and repeat after me? Holy God, Holy God. thank you thank for you. good news, for good news. That, Jesus is that Jesus is coming. Keep this joy, Keep this joy in, our hearts, in our hearts always. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Have fun to see school. Good in the school. Oh, boy. Sitting still is a hard work sometimes. <laughs> Let's sing together. God does for us. So let's uh, read it together as if we actually are amazed by these things that God does for us. So let's read together. Our God can part the sea. God, God can bring water from a rock and provide bread in the desert. Our God can walk on water. He can heal the sick. He can turn water into wine. Our God sets the stars in the sky. God hears our voice when we cry, and is closer than our own breath. There is nothing that our God cannot do. Let us worship, let us worship with joy and thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I don't mind at all that you're like, jump into the face. Thanks be to God. When we're children, the world is full of amazement and wonder, and curiosity is our first language. But as adults, we can forget to be curious. And we can lose the language of wonder. And when we do, we can become distant from God who joyfully creates all things. So today, let us return to God with hearts open in this prayer of confession. Holy God, forgive us for where we have taken for granted the wonders that you have felt for our lives. Forgive us for when we have and where our hearts have grown hard. Shake us out of our complacency and teach us to meet each other and the world you have made with awe and wonder and curiosity. Like Zechariah, may we be silent until our words are words of praise. Amen. Family of faith, be amazed. God who made mountains and newborns, sunrises and sunsets, marvels at you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and there is nothing you could do or leave undone that would prevent God from loving you. So hear the good news today. You belong to God, you are loved, and you are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's it. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters, how does a weary world practice joy? We make music and sing loudly, sometimes badly. We dance. God gives us the gospel. We share good news. We tell the story of Jesus. We show up for each other. Today we light a candle of joy, and its light is a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring joy into a weary world. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Then please be seated. Good morning. The first reading is the first reading is from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks and righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompen recompen recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. 
their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able, and let's read responsively Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then our eyes filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the air. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carry the sea, will come again with joy, showing their sheaves. And this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth. And she bore a son, and her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. And then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed. And he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed... The hand of the Lord was with him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Will you please bow your heads with me and let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we pray for your spirit in this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our thought out of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, two weeks left till Christmas. 14 days, 10 business days. <laughs> so remind me again, raise your, raise your hand, um, who are my list makers? Who are my other list makers? I've got a couple of them. Okay, yep. How are your lists going? Are they getting any shorter? Yes. No. <laughs> Some of them, yeah, good, 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 good. This is about the time where my shopping list and my church prep list and my decorating, fantasy, and travel preparing, Christmas card setting, clean, house cleaning, baking list starts to feel like those scrolls that you like, yep. and they go out to the street, you know? Yeah. Someone sent me a quote this week. It said this. It said, you are afraid to surrender because you don't want to lose control. But you never had control. All you had was anxiety. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 
But my lists make me feel like I'm in control. They're good like that for making me feel like all of this is in my power. And if I can just do, cross the things off, everything will go exactly as I want it to. But the problem is it's not real. So again, um, both my list makers and my not list makers, have you ever made plans and lists and lots of work getting ready only to have something happen that blew it all apart? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think we all have had that experience. It usually makes me feel like my head is going to explode. The truth is you and I should be used to it in this room because we are disciples of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has always been a master of surprises, of thing, the people thinking he's going this way, and something wholly new happens. And it starts even before he's born. You know, we've been talking about Zechariah and Elizabeth for a lot of these weeks of Advent. And I read a blessing about Zechariah this week, and it went like this. It said, it's one thing to take your voice for granted. It's quite another to think you know the plan to hold fast and tight to what you decide is possible in the house of the Lord. When he questioned the angel for proof of pro promises, the old priest was silenced, though perhaps the quiet was never meant to punish. For in the sabbatical of silence and the trimesters of contemplation, he grew into a gift for hearing blessings and songs and new life and impossibilities everywhere written by someone named Mena Carlson. But I love that language for his silence. A sabbatical of silence, trimesters of contemplation. Zachariah and Elizabeth teach us and lead us down a path that we all need to walk. Teach us to practice letting go of our control, holding our planning loosely so that there is room in it for God to surprise us. Oh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, you thought your days to become a parent were over? Huh? Surprise! <laughs> you thought you knew what God was doing with you? Surprise! She gave birth to a son, and the silent priest wrote his name is John. Surprise! Zechariah's silence gives way to praise, and Elizabeth is bursting forth with joy. And that's just how it is with God. This third Sunday of Advent, it's the Sunday of joy. And you'd think that joy would be the fourth Sunday, actually, that we'd like build up to this place of joy right before Christmas. But that's just how God works, that God breaks right in when we weren't expecting it. When we're trekking down the blue Sundays, all of a sudden there's this big old pink one, and here's the pastor looking like a Pepto-Bismol bottle. <laughs> it's amazing. We, uh, just when we think we know what to expect from our God, and that there are no surprises, and that we can control what's going to happen, God breaks in, and when God does, it's joy. And isn't it funny that God chooses to work this way? That first, God gives us a rhythm, a pattern, lays out law and order and in the scriptures and makes covenants so that we know how to act and how to behave and how to regulate our actions and how to treat each other and how to build a rhythm that puts us right before God. And then we can follow the rules and get it just right so that this whole heaven thing is managed and it's all under control and maybe God is too, except it's hard to pull off and sometimes we don't get it right. And just when we've twisted ourselves into knots about it, surprise, here comes the Messiah. God's anointed to set us free. And there are pages of prophecy that mean they thought they knew what to expect from the Messiah. But surprise, God fit all of it into a little eight-pound baby boy. God chooses to surprise us over and over again with great joy. Changes the rules, overturning even sin and death, and does it in the most vulnerable way possible. And then Jesus grows, and instead of gathering up an army to defeat Rome, surprise, 
Jesus chooses vulnerability again, allows the forces of this world to overcome him in preparation for God's greatest surprise. And the place of death is empty, and we declare with trumpets that Christ is risen indeed. And because he is, we're free too. We're free. But man, don't we act like we aren't sometimes? Don't we twist ourselves up in knots trying to manage everything and to make it all just right as if we can just make things look perfect and then we'll feel perfect too and it'll all fall in line as God wants it to. And we can control the people that we love and the things we worry about, we worry about the world, and we try to act on God's behalf, judging and punishing. And we get so busy trying to put things into the order we think God wants that we don't always leave room for God to surprise us. We get so worried about making things right that we don't notice the sunset while we drive late to a meeting. But because our God is so good, God keeps on surprising us with joy. It's what happens when the lyrics of a carol somehow pierce through everything going on right into your heart. Or there's something at the bottom of the ornament box that uh, lifts the work of decorating into something uh, holy and sacred. The plan that got canceled makes a space for peace, a peace you haven't felt in weeks. This Sunday, Zachariah and Elizabeth introduce their son to the world with great joy, and we light this pink candle on the Advent wreath. And as we do it, let's you and I, in these busy weeks going up until Christmas, practice making room. Breathe out and relax your shoulders and open up your hands and hold your planning for this season loosely for God to surprise you with something new. Stop running the to-do list because God is in the midst of holy surprises and disordering our world's orderly systems. God busts into our weariness with good news that we long for. And this good news is this. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. And our weariness will give way to worship our silence will give way to songs of praise and our mourning turn to dancing. God is still surprising us with joy. Amen. Amen. Please stand please with me and let's sing.
expectation. We offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Fill our hearts with awe and gratitude for wonders great and small. From the rising of the sun to its setting, you astound us, Lord. You spread out the stars and every inch of the cosmos is known to you. Help us see you in each day you give with your generous hand. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need especially those we name before you now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. With gratitude, we rejoice in the saints who witness to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these in all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
Please, please stand again as you are able and join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Our responsibility and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all this suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and this bread and cup we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Amen. Amen. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy <coughs> Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. There's where the amen is. Uh, please be seated. It is by Christ's invitation that you are welcome and always have a place at this table. As you come forward, you'll receive the bread. And having received that, uh, go to the tray and choose either red wine or white grape juice. And so receive the gifts of God. Uh, when Sophie and the kids come back, we will bring her in. Is she right out there? Right there. Oh, awesome. Then we'll have uh, Sophie and her family uh, come first as she celebrates uh, her very first communion. Uh, and then um, all are welcome. <laughs> May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of hope, freedom, and release. Brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able to receive God's blessing. And a, just a quick invitation that after the dismissal, you are welcome uh, to join Sophie across the hall. There is cake, and we will continue to celebrate her day of First Communion. May the God of peace bless you, the love of Christ sustain you in hope, and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
as you go into a weary world, speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. We will. Thanks be to God. Oh, what?